Okay, guys, I uh, want to begin our next unit. We've just wrapped up energy, and now we're going to move on to a, a related concept, which is concept of momentum. So let's, uh, let's get going with this momentum. This is a word that's probably familiar to you all. This is a pretty commonly used English word. Um, and how it's used in everyday life is pretty similar to how we're going to use it in the physics world. In everyday life, if, if an object has momentum, or sometimes you hear it used metaphorically in sports, maybe a, a team is said to have momentum. Um, and that, the word, the way we use it in English is, is usually to imply that if there's a trend, that that trend is going to continue. If a team is winning, they are going to continue winning. Um, uh, and, and that's essentially what momentum is all about. Uh, and in fact, we've already learned something about momentum, believe it or not, because we learned something about inertia. And momentum is related to inertia. So um, momentum, I'll write it out this way. It's the tendency for a moving body or a moving object to keep moving. And again, that probably sounds familiar. You may remember back when we did inertia, we had this statement that said some, that, that went something like this, an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion. This is the, the object in motion remain in motion um, half of that definition. So this is, you can think about it as, this is the, the movement half of inertia. So we could say inertia in motion. Okay, uh, bodies resist acceleration. They resist a change in motion. Um, so a moving object wants to keep moving, and that's that's momentum. Um, so you, you may remember when we talked about inertia, though, we said that not all objects have the same amount of inertia. Um, so, for instance, we said a bowling ball has more inertia than a soccer ball, which is to say that if you have a, a, a soccer ball at rest, it's pretty easy. If I kick it, I can accelerate it pretty easily bowling ball, if I kick it, much harder to accelerate. It has a lot more inertia. And it has a lot more inertia, we said, because it has a lot more mass. Well, similarly, a bowling ball that's moving has more momentum than a soccer ball that's moving at the same speed. Right? A bowling ball is going to knock over bowling pins much more easily than a soccer ball moving at the same speed, because since the bowling ball has more mass, it has more momentum. And so momentum is really related to, to only two things. So here's momentum. Momentum is abbreviated with the letter P um, for reasons I don't really know. And uh, the equation for momentum, it's very simple. It's mass times velocity. P equals mv. That's our equation for momentum. Uh, the units here, it doesn't get its own unit. Uh, it's just. The, the units for uh, mass times the units for velocity, so it's the kilogram meter per second. Uh, somewhat clunky unit. Um, uh, not really sure why they don't have a, uh, a, a named unit or a more convenient unit, but we just say the kilogram meter per second, um, and that's our unit for momentum. So you can see here, uh, Pretty straightforward equation, m times v, more mass means more momentum, more velocity means more momentum. Um, uh, again, relatively straightforward. And, and this mass here is related to the concept of inertia, right? The inertia is related to the mass. And the motion part, of course, is the velocity. OK, so let's get into uh, uh, a more interesting concept related to momentum. Imagine that you have an object with momentum, and you want to change the momentum of the object. Um, so maybe you want to speed it up, or maybe you want to slow it down. You want to change the object's momentum. Well, how are you going to do that? Uh, clearly, you're going to have to apply a force. You're going to have to push the thing or pull it. Um, but certainly, that's not you know that, that, that's not a sufficient way to. It's not uh, a complete definition for how we're going to change the momentum of an object. If I'm driving in my car and I hit the gas pedal. Um, it's not just how hard I hit the gas pedal that matters, it's also how long I hit the gas pedal. And so if we're going to change momentum, um, we need a new concept, and this is impulse. Um, the impulse is a change in momentum. It might have been more precise to say 
Im impulse causes a change in momentum. Impulse causes a change in momentum. And impulse is equal to FT. So impulse is equal to the force you exert, F, times the time that force is exerted. And the unit here is newtons, that's force, times seconds. So newtons, seconds. That's the impulse. And since impulse causes a change in momentum, I can combine these two equations. We call this the impulse momentum theorem. We can say that force times time, Ft, the, the impulse, equals the change in momentum, delta mv. Okay, and this is going to be, this now is a very interesting statement right here. We call this the impulse momentum theorem. Uh, what this says here is if I apply a force for a given amount of time, it's going to cause a certain change in momentum. It doesn't maybe look all that interesting. It, it basically looks like the definition of impulse. But if we, if we sort of fiddle around with the left-hand side here, we can realize some interesting things. Maybe, some, maybe we could explain some things that, that we already knew, some everyday things. So, for instance, um, let's imagine that I'm going to, I'm, I'm in the, the second floor of Hagerman right now in my classroom. Let's imagine I jump out the window. Would I be happier jumping out of the window? Would I be happier landing on cement or landing in the snowbank? Um, obviously, I'd be happier landing in the snowbank than the cement, but, but why is that? It has everything to do with the left-hand side of this equation. Let's recognize that regardless of whether or not I land in the snowbank or I land on the cement, I'm gonna have the same change in momentum, right? I'm gonna go, my mass is my mass, regardless of where I land. And my, my velocity is going to go from some value, say, you know, five meters per second down to zero. So regardless of where I land, I'm going to have the same change in momentum. So the right-hand side of the equation is the same. Uh, so if I land on, on the cement and I land on the concrete, or uh, sorry, if I land on the cement or I land on the snowbank, it's the same impulse. It's the same change in momentum. Okay, But the left-hand side is going to be very, very different because if I land on the cement, if you imagine the FT, the impulse, force times time, if I land on the cement, my momentum is going to change very quickly. In other words, the T value is going to be really small. If I land in the snowbank, the T value is going to be bigger, right? I hit the snow and I sort of gradually, the snow compresses and gradually slows me down. So the T value is going to be a lot bigger. Well. If, the, if the, the impulse is the same, if the product of F and T has to be the same, if the time is smaller, what's the force going to be? Well, it's got to be a bigger force. Whereas when I hit the snowbank, the time is bigger, so the force has to be smaller. And so here you can see why. It's, it's, it, it has everything to do with these force values here. On the cement, it's a big F. On the snowbank, it's a small F. That's why I'd rather land in the snowbank. Same change in momentum, but in the snowbank, the change in momentum is extended over a larger period of time and therefore um, uh, not nearly so painful. The, we could apply this concept to uh, all sorts of things. So um, uh, uh, this is why, let's say, um, if you're doing gymnastics and you're, you're on the parallel bar or uh, you know, the balance beam or whatever, they, they put those mats underneath you. And the reason they put the mats underneath you is you, if you fall, it'd be nice to hit the mat. If you hit the mat, what, why does the mat cushion your fall? Well, again, just like the snowbank, it lengthens the time of the impulse, therefore decreasing the force. Uh, airbags in cars would be another example. If, if, if I get into a car accident, if I'm driving down the, the road and I hit a tree, uh, the momentum of my head needs to be stopped by something. And it could either be stopped by the dashboard, which is very hard, that would be analogous to me jumping out and hitting the cement, or I could hit the, uh, the airbag, in which case that would be similar to, to the snowbank, right? The airbag lengthens the impulse, thereby decreasing the amount of force. Um, so let's, uh, let's try a practice problem. I'm going to sort of make something up on the fly. Hopefully this will work out okay. And, and to try to indicate just how profound this effect can be, uh, 
let's go ahead. Well, let's go ahead and imagine that I do, in fact, jump out of um, Hagerman and I land in in the snowbank. Let's compare. Uh, let's compare how these numbers could turn out very differently if I land in the snowbank versus landing in the cement. So let's say my mass. Go to white here. Let's say that my mass, just to make everything easy, is 100 kilograms. It's obviously not, but let's say it is. And let's say that I'm I'm hitting the snow. My initial velocity is five meters per second, and obviously I come to a stop, so my final velocity is zero meters per second. So let's imagine, well, first of all, let's figure out what the, the change in momentum is, right? Let's figure out, in here, let's figure out the right-hand side of the equation. Well, change in momentum, delta mv, equals m v final minus m v initial. So that this is what's v final, v final is zero, right? So this whole thing is zero. So what's my, what's my uh, change in momentum? It's negative 100 times uh, 5. So negative 500 kilogram meters per second. Ooh, maybe I should, this is a good time. I, I should have mentioned this earlier. This momentum is a vector. So let's note that really quick. This is a vector quantity. Right, direction matters. We've gotten away from vectors when we were doing energy. We had a lot of scalars, but this is a vector. Velocity is a vector, so momentum is a vector. So this negative here, I'm, I'm including that negative to to uh, indicate that my momentum here, what's happening to my momentum? My momentum is decreasing. So this is negative 500 kilogram meters per second. So regardless of whether or not I hit the snowbank or the cement, that's my change in momentum. So let's imagine. Let's break this down now. Let's say here's the cement and here's the snowbank. And let's imagine that when I hit the cement, what's my t value? How quickly do, do I come to a stop? Well, let's imagine that my time value here is, I don't know, what's reasonable? A hundredth of a second, 0 0.01 seconds. Right, that's, the cement's very, very hard, so I'm going to come to a stop really quickly. So here it is, cement. 0 0.001 seconds. And let's say with the snowbank, let's imagine that it's, I don't know, let's say it's a tenth of a second. Right? That doesn't sound like a whole lot of a difference, right? Um, actually, let's make it one second. Let's make it one second. Make it a little bit more dramatic. Uh, this difference doesn't look that big, right? I'm going from a tenth of a second to one second. These are both small time values. But let's see what happens to the force value if I plug in these time values. So. Uh, Here's the impulse momentum theorem, right? I've already calculated the right-hand side of the equation. Now let's go ahead and look at the left-hand side, Ft. So either case, Ft, Ft equals negative 500. Ft equals negative 500 in both cases. But let's see what happens to the Fs here. Well, in the case of the cement, it's force times 0 0.01 equals negative 500. So what's F? Well, F is negative 500 divided by 0 0.01. Well, what's that? That's negative 50,000 newtons. Okay, That's an enormous force. Right? Divide by 100. I have to tack on two zeros here. That's where I got the, the 50,000. Uh, this is an enormous force. I certainly do not want to experience this kind of force. Right, Negative 50,000 newtons of force would be extremely unpleasant. That's why I'm likely to hurt myself if I were to jump out of the window and, and hit the cement. Now let's compare it to the snowbank. Well, now the force or the time here is one second. So F times 1 equals negative 500. So what's F? Negative 500 newtons. Very, very big difference, right? 500 newtons, th that might not feel great, right? It would, th that's a significant force, but it's not likely to hurt me. I'm not likely to, to suffer any severe damage but from a 500 newton force. Um, that's much, much smaller than a, than a 50,000 newton force. Um, so uh, you can see, even though this time difference, right? We All we did was change the time from a hundredth of a second to one second. Didn't seem like that big of a difference, but look at the difference in the force. Right, we go from uh, 50,000 newtons to 500 newtons. And so you can see um, uh, something like an airbag, 
um, or a, a mat, a gymnastic mat, one of these these cushioning materials, the, the, the time difference doesn't have to be dramatic for the force difference to be dramatic. If it's even just a little bit of cushioning, that can go a long way to, uh, um, to reducing force from a uh, devastating to a, um, uh, a much more tolerable amount of force. All right, hopefully that quick introduction uh, makes sense. We'll spend some, um, some time in class practicing this concept next time.